Ho ho mama. I've just taken delivery of my first ever power meter, the Garmin Rally RS200 pedals. After having had a road bike for about eight years, some of you might be wondering, why the hell is it taking me so long to get one? And if you haven't got a power meter already, you might be wondering at what point should you go about purchasing one? Spoiler alert, it's probably not in eight years time. So let's unbox these, get them on the bike, and then I'll explain why I've waited eight years to get a power meter and why you probably shouldn't while I take the pedals out for a bit of a test ride on the road. Roll the intro. I'm Johnny, a coach and personal trainer who in the last few years has found a passion for training on two wheels. Join me as I document my journey to become the stronger cyclist, whilst hopefully sharing some of my coaching knowledge to help you too. See you on the road. It's nice to see power coming through on my Garmin. So there's a couple of different reasons of why I waited so long to get a power meter. And the first one is that, well, if you saw my YouTube video a couple of weeks ago, you'll see I've just taken delivery of my new bike. And until then, I've had the same road bike for eight years. So I always thought, well, what's the point in getting a power meter for a bike that's, well, you know, eight years old now? Of course I could have done, but it, to me, just felt like, putting F1 telematics and sensors on a 20 year old Vauxhall Astra. The second reason was I've only recently got into cycling seriously. I've had my road bike for eight years. I've been a bit of a weekend warrior on and off for those eight years. It's only the past one or two I've been taking it seriously. And as a beginner, cycling is quite expensive anyway. You've got to buy a new bike, buy all the kit, buy glasses, buy a helmet. So buying a power meter as well just seemed like an expense I didn't necessarily need. And as a beginner, as I was until a couple of years ago, you can make plenty of fitness gains from just using your heart rate and just riding by feel as well. And finally, until recently, I've been doing a lot of my training indoors on my watt bike. Obviously my watt bike has had power, so I've done all my kind of structured training and structured workouts on the indoor trainer. And when I've come outside, I've just kind of used it as a chance to get out, get some fresh air and get some general miles in. I haven't really been tracking my workouts necessarily when riding outdoors on the bike. I have recently sold my watt bike, but that's a story for a whole nother video. So those are some of the reasons it's taken me so long to get a power meter, but why have I decided to get one now? So the simple reason as to why I've bought one now is because I want to start taking my training a little bit more seriously. As I said, I've been able to track my proper workouts and my power on my indoor trainer on my watt bike, but I now want to be able to do it when I'm outdoors as well. I've used how I feel and my heart rate zones for so long, I feel I've kind of progressed as much as I can using those methods. So to carry on improving, I just wanted a more accurate way to look at my training outdoors. Heart rate is so great for training and I still use it, but it's changed by things such as the temperature or how much caffeine you've had on it any given day, for example. So having another metric to train off, one that's a little bit more accurate and is essentially looking at what you're putting out on the pedals, no matter how your body's feeling, is really important. At least it is once you get a little bit more advanced anyway. And since I have a new fancy bike, I felt I could justify getting some expensive pedals that are gonna track my power to put on it. As opposed to my old bike, having pedals that probably cost double the price that the bike did. Plus I also got 20% off the pedals, so I couldn't really say no. But that's why I've waited so long to get a power meter and why I've just purchased one now. If you don't have one yet, when should you be looking to get one? <laughs> Yeah. 
So when and even if you should get a power meter is really down to you and what sort of riding you're looking to do and how much money you want to invest in cycling as well because power meters aren't particularly cheap. As I said, as a beginner, you really don't need to be able to track power. You can use your heart rate via a cheap heart rate monitor or even just ride on feel. That's perfectly good enough and will get you really pretty far. But once you do start getting a little bit more advanced and do want to take your training a little bit more seriously, then a power meter is definitely the best way to go and the most accurate way to track your training. So I don't think there's necessarily any one size fits all approach. It's really just how seriously you want to take it and how much money you've got lying around. Oh, there we go. First ride outdoors with a power meter complete. If you'd like to know a little bit more on how to train with power effectively, or if you'd just like to see a review on the Garmin power pedals, do let me know down in the comment section below. But thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you in next week's video. Ride strong.